Business Secretary Grant Shapps has today revealed a new bill requiring minimum levels of service from NHS staff, firefighters and railway workers during any industrial action. This minimum level of service means workers who would like to strike might not be able to. The bill, which is set to pass in as quickly as six months, has stated that unions and staff who breach minimum service levels will lose employment protections and could be sacked. Someone who's spoken out about this bill is the leader of the Social Democratic Party and someone who I've only ever met via Zoom before, so I'm very pleased to admit now actually exists in real life. It's William Cluson. William, how are you? Good to be here. Are you dead against this, then? Yeah, I think it's just... It's, it's a, another publicity stunt, actually. Nothing they do at the moment can help this present crisis, mm -hmm. right? Because it's got to get through the Lords and it, it possibly won't. Also, they don't have a mandate for this. You know, they had a limited mandate in their uh, 2019 manifesto to to have no you know, minimum service level mm. trains. And now they're extending it to fire service and everything else. It is desperation because they've messed up. The, well, the... I've, I mean, I could argue, just on that, the train thing I care less about, as indeed the British public do, I think. Mm. When it comes to firefighters, you know, mm. I, thankfully, touch wood, have never had to call the fire department. Mm. But if I was about to burn to death, mm. I, I think I would be of the mind that that lot shouldn't be allowed to be on strike that day. You'll find that most fire services, even when they're on strike, have minimum provision, mm. actually, and it's the same with nursing as well. So a lot of this happens anyway. This is why I've called out the government many times recently on publicity stunts. Mm. Uh, Rwanda scheme is a publicity stunt. It won't work. Well, it's not happened yet. It's not happened. It won't happen. I said that at the time. It's just a publicity stunt. It can't happen. For If they were serious, they'd have to undermine the legal uh, basis for people coming and staying. And they don't do that, so they're not serious. So, but what I've talked about is actually the broader causes of this. Why, how do we get here? Mm. What your, all this flailing around the cost of living crisis, the, uh, the government's responses to it, uh, publicity stunts like this, these are symptoms of a broader problem. The basic problem, we, we've got a trade problem. We, this country's got a trade problem. We, we, we mm. buy more than we sell. And no government, ne New Labour or Tories, have done anything about this for years, literally, and it's in the trade balance. Let's have a look at the bigger picture stuff then, because I have been saying this for a long time, which is that there's been no vision. It seems to me, and I just wonder whether or not the media has had a bit to play in this, because yeah. it seems to be that we have, in new politics, it's mm. all about sound bites. Mm. It's all about mm. 20 seconds, make you put your slogan, mm. together, stronger, mm. or whatever, all mm. that rubbish, mm. right? Mm. And actually, I think that undermines ideology and having yeah. a clear, yeah. coherent vision. Well, too, too few, too, very few people in the Tory party have any ideology, actually, now. And actually, I'd argue that the few that do have the wrong one, which is sort of basic unilateral free trade, they're, they're sort of free trade maniacs. Uh, and they're people like Liz Truss that go off and do Japan trade deal. That trade deal is modelled to widen our bilateral trade deficit with Japan. And I'm just going to call it out now. It's going to make us poorer. It will make us poorer in the long run. That, you know, you, you can only pay for imports in, in one of three ways. You can export something, you can sell something you, you've already made, or you can issue debt. And this got successive governments, I think I would call out the Labour Party and the Tories are specialists in failure. Yeah, yeah they are. But, but then this is a big problem, OK? Because if we've got, as we do have now, several massive issues facing this country, yeah. massive issues. In fact, we've dealt with a couple of them so far tonight, actually. Yeah. We've got what's going on in the channel, immigration as a whole, you mm. could argue. Mm. We've got the cost of living crisis. Housing. We've got ha housing. Goodness yeah. gracious yeah. me, housing. The NHS, mm. right? Mm. Without... And I'm certainly not calling for this before someone clips this up and I get the sack. Without some kind of radical coup, we're not going to get anything different from what we've got now, are we? Well, we and what we've got now is just sticking plaster politics. It is, but we, and we think long term, and some of the things we say will be tough. You know, we, we, on housing, we propose a, a, a state getting back in the business of building houses. That's, mm. what, that's basically what's gone wrong. We've destroyed the state's capacity to build houses. You end up with a housing crisis, and that has to be repaired. And it has to be, you have to be serious about it. Likewise, on trade and industry, you need to, actually, we've called for, for some trade friction to reindustrialize. We don't make anything, no. Patrick. We don't. No, we no. don't. And that's a, that's, a, that's a crime. Crucial. That is a crime that we do not make enough stuff in this 9%. No. And, th and then we do, by the way, then we import it from absolute despots. Exactly. <laughs> and we don't care about slavery. It's the worst Slave of Slave factories, <laughs> forget about it, or polluting factories. Yeah, yeah. It's so dishonest. Yeah. Let's be honest. So I'll make a deal with you, OK? Uh, we are a serious party. Mm. We have a very good uh, green paper on this, which is the end of a difference, economics green paper. Mm. Excellent read. It's, it's tough read. Uh, that's what we believe in, OK? Mm. Now, we will have uh, over 100 candidates in the next election. 
if we if, if we get MPs in on that scale, we'll hold the balance of power. That's my offer. OK. Well, well, fair enough. It's a decent offer. One thing I would ask, though, and politely say, which is the British public, I think, who I love, I think sometimes we get what we ask for. And if we are weak at times and we let the tail wag the dog mm. and we roll over and die when it comes to some inexplicable elements of woke ideology, mm. for example, or we, for a quieter life possibly, mm. remove ourselves from common sense, mm. or we become incredibly reactive. I appreciate the irony of me saying this. My job is to react to stuff. But mm. you know, with things like this, then we get the kind of politician that we create. And that politician is naff. Yeah, they are, and they're cowardly. And I think one of the biggest... I, we go around saying most of our problems, even the economic problems, are actually cultural, really. Mm -hmm. They're cultural, really. It's uh, a failure to take seriously making anything here. It's a failure to buy British or want to buy British. All of these things start with not caring. And, and the migrant crisis uh, is basically an exercise in that, an example. Exactly, we're just... They've got an 80... Things. They've got a 70-seat majority, Patrick. Yeah. And they don't... If they can't... I would say to anyone wanting to think of foolish enough to vote Tory... Do you really think they would do anything? They, they've, all the stuff that you hear from Sunak now, I don't believe any of it. Well, I just wonder, if I think we've got time for one more after we probably get shouted out, but I, I, I do just wonder whether or not this is bad news for you, because I suspect that people are going to go more down the Reform UK route, whether they're going to go more down the idea of someone who more overtly... Well, I suppose right wing. Really. Well, yeah, but the free, open borders, free trade hasn't really served us very well. And if you're in the Midlands or the North, actually, you want reindustrialization. That's us. You want a housing program. That's us. So actually, we, we're talking to, to Reform UK, as you know. We've done a deal in South Yorkshire, working very closely with them. I had a meeting with them on, on Saturday. So that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Any we, more on that? Well, we've done an electoral deal. It's a limited deal. We went, we've got no stand dealers in, in six seats each. And in South Yorkshire, we have joint description. So we're fighting that together. It's quite That's exciting. fascinating, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. A fertile ground. Yeah, we'll do well. We'll do well. Watch this space. What would be, what would be, what would be the aim? We want to win seats there. We will win seats. Uh, I, Reform have a slightly better, they're a bigger party than us, to be honest uh, about that. But we'll see. We'll do very well. We've got most of Sheffield, I think, so we'll see. And actually, this is interesting. Sorry, again, I'm dragging this out now because you just dropped a bombshell at the end here. But there are elements of you and reform, I think, that are actually very workable together. Yeah, we, we, there are about four or five things that we agree with. We want to control immigration. We think we're good enough to, to govern ourselves. That's important. Yes. We want electoral reform. We want constitutional reform. We disagree with them about the economics, mm. and that does affect a few things. But we're growing up enough to work together. Well, watch this space. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed Cheers. that. Pleasure. We didn't talk much about the strikes, but we didn't have to. We did more. Some